Hi everyone, it's Kuru here, sending you love wherever you are. You know, over the last 14 years, having had the privilege of coaching everyone from billionaires to celebrities to athletes to, to circus performers to uh, pop stars, insurance agents, you name it, I've had the opportunity to really dive deep one-on-one -on -one and help transform and facilitate breakthroughs for individual, individuals on very deep levels. And one of the areas that often comes up very intensely is the area of relationship. I often say that love and relationship is an area that no matter how much theory you have, no matter how much you've read, no matter you know how great your ideas, what, whatever level of your own conscious evolution you're at, relationship is, is an area that will show you where you're at, but it's often an area that will often bring up anything that is unresolved. And that's why it can be such a source of great joy, but also such a source of great pain, especially if there's a bunch of unresolved stuff. And relationship is an amazing mirror. I believe that relationship is a mirror. Relationship will show you where you are at. Relationship through the mirror of another person will show you aspects of your own consciousness, will show you parts of yourself that you've either been suppressing, denying, avoiding, consciously or unconsciously, uh, parts of yourself that you need to integrate, heal or own. Relationship is a mirror and you, each person, attra you attract to yourself a mirror manifestation of an aspect of yourself at that particular time showing you who and where you are are at. So I often say that there's no relationship out there. There's just a relationship with yourself manifested out there. So the question I often ask my clients is, especially working in this area, is do you like what you see? What are you attracting? Sometimes, you know, people often say, well, what if I'm not actually attracting anything? What does that mean? You know, that's a whole other conversation, <laughs> but it often does mean something, you know? So, so take a look at your relationship life and, and let's just talk about the romantic area of your life and look at what you're attracting, who you're attracting, and what it actually reflects to you about yourself at this particular time. Relationship is a profound, I believe, a profound, tool, a profound path, a profound process, a profound experience that will help your evolution. It's an evolutionary path that I believe can help us become uh, the more, the more, the I believe that relationship can help us become the most authentic versions of ourselves if we go into it consciously, you know, and one of the questions I often get and this was a question I often got from women in, in very intensely, which is really why I created the Man Breakthrough Experience. And because I got this question and had the opportunity to work with women very intensely, and these were women that, you know, such as many of you listening, women that were powerful, you'd read all the books, you'd been to, they'd been to all the seminars, they'd read all the books, they had all the information, you know, how to get a man, what a man wants, you know, the keys to relationship, what not to do. You know, some of the women I'd work with, they knew what not to do, what they shouldn't do, they knew, they knew, they had the information. Yet, have you ever thought, well, if I know the information, if I have the information, why do I keep attracting the same kind of patterns in my life? Why do I keep attracting the same kind of relationship over and over and over again? Why do I keep attracting the same kind of partner in love, the same kind of man, over and over and over and over and over again? You know, we often think that we, we have free will. Right? If you ever thought that, well, I'm, I'm a free person. But have you ever also thought that if you were really free, would you make the choices that you've made throughout your life? If you were really, really, really free, would you be choosing the kinds of partners in relationship that you've chosen? Would you be with the partner you're actually with now if you were really free? So I often say that we actually aren't as free as we thought we necessarily were. You see, the degree to which you are conditioned is the degree to which you are not free. The degree to which you are run by your programming, by your conditioning from your past, is the degree to which you won't be able to choose clearly in the present that you're actually being chosen upon and run by the beliefs and the stories and the unresolved wounds and the unresolved patterns from your past, whether it's your own stuff, whether it's your parents' stuff, whether it's generational stuff from your grandparents and you know on and on and on that is passed down to us in our bodies, in our cells, in our minds that often we're not conscious of. We just think this is who I am. And you know, as children, we are 
we're free. You know, as children, we're born free. We're in touch with a sense of aliveness. We're in touch with a sense of freedom. And then we go into life and we deal with our parents. We deal with society. We deal with media. We deal with you know, our grandparents and our, and our families. And we start learning all sorts of ways to disconnect, to not feel, to shut down. Perhaps our Perhaps your father wasn't around and, or, or, or one of your parents wasn't necessarily emotionally available. So as a child, because that disconnect was painful, you might have learned a certain strategy, a certain way of maneuvering yourself to disconnect from how you feel, disconnect from the, the void, the pain of feeling the, the, the no emotional connection, the abandonment, so to speak. And we often learn all sorts of ways to contort ourselves, all sorts of ways to not feel the pain, all sorts of ways to not feel the hurt of, of, of our parents not being present. So what are some of the strategies, what are some of the ways that you have created, manufactured, structured within yourself, often unconsciously as children, that assisted you ultimately in surviving? So we develop all sorts of ways to disconnect from pain, to not feel hurt, but then we also develop a, uh, a strategy, a set way of being, we, we start developing a persona and a mask, a way of being to go into the world to get love, to get validation, to get approval. Well, if I'm nice, if, if I'm a good girl, if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm a quiet person, if, I, if, I, if I'm funny, if I'm, you know, if I'm the people pleaser, we develop a certain set strategy and a way of being in the world to get love, to get approved, ultimately again, to survive, to avoid pain, to not get hurt, to get love, to get validation and approval. And we become a sort of contorted version of ourselves and we call this me. And then from that place, we take that way of being into the world, unconsciously living that way into the world. And from that place, we're choosing, from that place of being conditioned and programmed, we are making choices about what we want to do. We're making choices about relationship. You know, ultimately every single thing that happens to us as children, get stored in our nervous system. Every single experience gets stored in our nervous system. The nervous system is that antenna to the world. Information comes in, it gets filtered in the nervous system. The nervous system processes, processes that. So in a sense, that, that the state of our nervous system and that filtering mechanism inside of us is determining our experience of experience in that moment, the state of your nervous system, so that means if there's a whole bunch of unprocessed stuff, trauma, pain, conditioning, wounds, that, that we haven't processed through that is stored inside of us, information comes in, you, you may not necessarily be filtering and perceiving reality accurately, and as a result, information comes in and your reaction may not be based on what's actually truly happening. And based on that, we're often making choices, based on the state of our physiology, our nervous system, our minds, our emotions, we're making choices in the world and as a result choosing partners in the world, choosing love relationships and so often I've found people saying, you know, could I met this person, you may have had this experience, I've met this person and, and I feel so in love, I feel in love, oh wow, I'm just, I'm in love with this person, I feel like I, I know them, I feel like I, 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 I've known them forever, they feel so familiar, have you ever had that feeling? And, and, you know, many times what we think is love isn't love. It's more the fact that my nervous system and your nervous system kind of resonate together and it feels familiar. Perhaps you had a father that wasn't around, that wasn't emotionally available, that even when he was physically present, he wasn't present. So you learn that love was aloof and all of a sudden, you learn that love is aloof. That's the wiring in your nervous system. That's the resonance. So you learn to associate love and aloofness, love and disconnection. So what you might tend to gravitate towards as a familiar feeling is someone, uh, a, a man or woman, a partner who is a little aloof. And even though that's not what you want, because that's what you have wired, love equals aloofness, disconnection, it feels familiar. So you meet that person. It's like, oh, that feels 
like home. That feels so familiar, you know, perhaps, you know, you, you may have experienced criticism or, or abuse and, and it was pain, so love is pain. And then all of a sudden you meet someone who's uh, mentally abusive or you meet someone who uh, denigrates you, criticizes you, doesn't appreciate you and it's like painful. And because you have a wiring that love is pain and you meet this person that kind of makes you feel a similar way that you felt, it feels like it fits, it feels like it's Ah, it feels like it's really familiar all of a sudden. Even though it, it doesn't feel good, but something feels familiar. And we often think, oh, I, I feel like I've known you forever. We have known that person forever in, in, in an energetic sense, in the sense of the pattern is familiar based on our childhood. So many times what we think is chemistry isn't really chemistry. It's just that my stuff fits your stuff and it fits together. So, so I believe that the only real way that you can truly choose a partner is to be conscious. The only way that you can truly make a choice as to who is right for you and who is, is aligned for you is first and foremost to stop seeking out there and first and foremost to look inside and clear away the blocks, clear away the blockages, clear away the programming, clear away the, the suppressed emotions, the wounds, whatever you may have been carrying that's clouding your ability to see clearly because we develop layers upon layers upon layers and we often are trying to see out there and make determinations out there based on stuff that's unresolved and bringing that baggage and we keep recreating and that's why even though you might know the information you might know what to do you might know what type of person is good for you what type of person is not good for you you might know all of that that's often why there's a feeling of all of a sudden a person shows up in your life and you just feel this uncontrollable you may have felt it this uncontrollable urge like oh i can't, i know i shouldn't be with this guy i know i shouldn't it's it's just i know he's not the one but i just can't i help myself the pull is so strong because often we seek out partners in our life you know, based on what's unresolved, we often unconsciously, there's an impulse for healing. We seek out partners in our life that often fit the, the, the energetic and the traits of our caregivers, those that we grew up with that imprinted us. I believe there's a part of us that's ultimately, often unconsciously, there's an impulse that is seeking to heal what wasn't healed. So we attract to ourselves aspects of ourselves. And as I said in the beginning, do you like what you see? Many times we try and change what's out there. We, we try and change the guy. We try and change the partner. We try and change the person. But if outer experience is a reflection of your inner reality, then the real power is not to try and change what's out there, but it's to really shift what's in here. It's to clear yourself. It's to heal yourself. It's to transform yourself. It's to liberate yourself. And I believe as you do that, then the manifestation of what you will begin to attract to you in the form of a man, in the form of a relationship in your life will also begin to, will actually have to shift to begin to meet and mirror where you are at. So this is really the essence of why I created the Man Breakthrough Experience. People often say, the Man Breakthrough Experience? Well, why the Man Breakthrough Experience? You know, the Man Breakthrough Experience really is a two and a half day intensive immersion experiential seminar training for women because women kept asking for it and it's really about assisting you in decoding men transforming the hidden blocks that keep you from attracting love and uh, ultimately giving you the courage and, and the inspiration to create the life of your dreams that's really what it's about ultimately it's not about men it's about you we use the the filter, the vehicle, the metaphor of man and relationship as a bridge to have a conversation with you about you because love often brings up everything that's unlike itself and there's no area more intense than love and intimate relationship to show you where you are at in reality. So uh, it's really a breakthrough experience in your own self. It's a breakthrough experience within yourself. And what's amazing is, yes, you'll learn a, a bunch of amazing information. I will share with you some cutting edge information. That is for sure. And you can read all about that on the Man Breakthrough website.
But what I've seen that's really powerful with the hundreds of women that have gone through it over the last few years is as you peel the layers away, the conditioning, the programming, as you let go of all those old layers that really aren't who you are, you as a woman will reconnect and get in touch with the essential nature of love that you are. You will realize during this experience, as we let go of who you are not, what no longer serves you, you will realize that you are love. That you are love. And as you realize that you are love and that, and you can rest in that, then you realize that you no longer have to seek love. You no longer have to be a love addict and seek love and seek validation and seek a guy, seek a man, seek a relationship out there. As you realize you are love, you rest in that and there's a fulfillment in that and you become incredibly attractive. Like a flower, you just be. And what I found is as you as a woman just be authentically, naturally, radiantly alive as love that you are, you become attractive and you will attract the kind of consciousness of a man. You will attract the kind of consciousness of a man of the divine masculine, you know, energetic mirror to you that mirrors to you who and what you are and can appreciate and see the love that you are because that's what you're being. So if you feel ready for a breakthrough in the area of love, if you feel ready to let go of whatever's been in the way of you shining your light and being your most magnificent and radiant self, if you feel ready to attract a whole different kind of man, a whole different kind of relationship, if you feel ready to have a whole new relationship with yourself and with life, I want to invite you, I want to invite you, each and every one of you, to the Man Breakthrough Experience in Los Angeles. It's an incredible, incredible experience. You can find out all the details on the Man Breakthrough Experience website. I will see you there. Details are below. I look forward to it. Commit to yourself and watch the miracles happen. Love now.